welcome membership launches and this is how i believe you should be recovering from the march core update i'm going to show you all my theories all my data and we're going to be talking about uh what gets people penalized what potentially gets people recovered um let's dive into it so uh i've been working on this for over a month and this is going to be the distilled version of my full report so if you want to read the full report it's available at this link and i'll have one in the description let's jump into all the work that i've been doing i'm going to try to synthesize it and i'm gonna to try to help you get from this big like drop in the march core update to potentially winning with the march core update because some people have been increasing in traffic some websites have been experiencing incredible growth and that's my objective that's where i want to get you um, as quickly as possible and i do believe it's possible um, I'm going to share my theories and I'm going to show you what I would personally do if I was affected by the March core update. So let's dive into it. I believe the recovering of the March core update lies in creating a resource that improves overall site engagement. If that's the, that's the most important thing out of all of the, my discoveries is that I believe the website needs to be a resource. The website needs to keep people on the site. You need to be able to focus on site engagement. And I'm going to dive into depth into what that means and why you could be creating even good content, but not be achieving those goals. Um, because ultimately when users are happy, Google is happy. So let me show you what I mean by that. So Google looks at their users. This has been disclosed and this, you know, people uh, have been talking about this for a very, very long time, but it's changed after the March up, uh, core update. It has changed how they do it. So um, traditionally, this is what we would be looking at. We'd have the page on the left, where Google would monitor search clicks from the, from Google, and if users go back to a pay uh, back to Google after they click on your website, then that's usually a bad sign. So they start at Google, they go to your website, then they go back. Google's like, eh, maybe it didn't satisfy it didn't satisfy the user intent. That was kind of like the extent of Google looking at the overall page user experience. Um, so ultimately, our goal would be to like, okay, get a click and kind of keep them on the site. And then, yay, that, you know, if people stay on the site or, or at least they don't go back to Google to search again, then we, we would consider that a job done, right? But today, after a March core update, that might not be enough. See, this is where the, there's a difference and this is where it changes. Because um, before, Google was specifically uh, looking, prob well, probably, these are my theories, remember, um, at page-specific metrics. So if you have document A, B, C, D, um, and they're all have 20 second of on page metrics and all these pages can compete together. They're all good, right? So um, all the pages should be equal. This is what Google was likely looking at before. However, now after the March core update, they're looking uh, most likely at a second dim dimension, which is site metrics. So here we're looking at not only the page metric, but the overall website metric and seeing how users engage and how long they stay engaged with that entire website. So here, if we have uh, say all the same 20 seconds again, but here just 12 minutes, cause like it's Reddit and people are just browsing Reddit all the time. And here it's uh, half, a, not even a minute, like 0.75 minutes. This is going to stand out as a poor result, even though all the pages can be good. So even though you might have the same type of content or quality content as a competitor, if the competitor's website like Forbes or Reddit or whatever has longer site metrics, then your website looks like crap in comparison. So this is essentially the um, driving force, in my opinion, of the March core update where poor site metric score leads to drops in rankings. And um, even if it's human written content. So but the, by the way, uh, there's more data on this as soon as uh, I get to it, but we have AI content, we have human written content. And even with human written content, people have been penalized during March core update um, as we see here. So um, uh, conversely, we have AI content or you know just just content in general that is experiencing incredible growth with few backlinks. So just with a really good metric score, even though I don't have many backlinks, they're just growing like crazy. So this is what I want for you. I'm gonna show you how we got to it and how you could potentially achieve it. Um, and uh, right before we do, Google also released during the March core update an update to links, right? They mentioned links and it would make sense to me that if they were introducing a new metric score for websites, they would probably introduce it for links as well. So this is completely um, untested at the moment. We're actually running tests to be able to confirm or deny this. So take this part with a grain of salt, um, where usually we know Google measures the power of links, like how powerful is a link from a page with dogs to another website on pay on dogs and so forth. 
you know, the past like tr uh, topical relevance, the past power, the past everything, it would be very easy for them to add a metric score uh, to this. So if this website has a high metric score, then it's worth more than a website that does not have a metric score. That could re that could change the way they calculate links throughout the entire web, which would explain why there's a long rollout. Because whenever there's a long rollout, usually it's because of links, because they have to recalculate one node of links to a second node of links to a second node of links and so forth, because one link affects the other. So that's kind of a hint that they're doing something with links. So here's how it would look before, where you just have the power out go right, right through. And here is the very, very, very simplified equation where they would just add um, a, a factor of the metric score. So if this website has a good metric score, then that would make the link worth more. And if it has a bad metric score, because people really don't like this website, then the web, then the link might be worth less. So once again, this is being tested right now. We're running tests and experiments just to find this out. But this is just a theory that I have that might explain some of the things that we're seeing online. All right, let's move on. So we checked everything and I'm just going to run through really quickly the data that we checked just so you're up to date and you know what's happening. Uh, we looked at word count, small little reduction on word count, but nothing too meaningful. Um, H2 subheadlines, exactly the same. H3 subheadlines, exactly the same. H4 has subheadlines within the margin, like a error. <laughs> Within the margin, it it dropped a bit, but it's not that big of a deal because it's H4s and we don't pay attention to H4s as much. Average images also dropped a bit, but all, all of these factors, all these changes, I think it's just because sh uh, shorter, like a f like uh, sh forms like Reddit and forums and sm discussion sites are ranking a bit better. So that's why we're seeing these uh, discrepancies. But all of this wasn't really important um, because it doesn't appear to have changed. Google does not have a peer it does not appear to have changed the way they evaluate on-page SEO, as we see here with the relevance score. Relevance score is an on-page metric that combines a whole bunch of ranking factors and it determines how much, how optimized a page is in terms of SEO. The only thing that we continued to see is that related entity density tends to be kind of a driving factor after Google likes your website. So what I'm trying to say with this is if Google likes your metric score, like your user experience of your website, the backlinks are good and everything is good, then the next thing that they look at is going to usually be the average entity density. So here we had a keyword where um, we had a the, the Dogster site, which was doing well. It had an average entity of 0 0.12, which was exactly the average. And this, this was ranking number four. And then when we look at number one, they actually had a the number one result. So this competitor didn't even have as much power, but they're ranking higher because likely because they have a higher entity density. I'm seeing this across the board. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. So it's this, your entity density doesn't matter, doesn't impact if you're a penalized or not, but once you do recover or once you do are, are in good standing, that's the next thing that you want to pay attention to. Okay, cool. So we also looked at guest posts because we we're talking about links. Maybe Google went after guest posts. We didn't really find any patterns. We looked at all a whole bunch of websites that were penalized. Some had them, some didn't. We looked at the websites that were rewarded. Most of them didn't, um, but we didn't find any clear patterns with guest posts. In, and then we looked at AI content. So, you know, was uh, AI websites being penalized? Well, um, we didn't find any correlation. Uh, overall, almost every single website these days has some sort of level of AI content. It's absolutely insane. Um, websites that had a lot of cheap AI or generic AI. I don't like to say you use the word cheap, but I use the word generic. So things that are like straight out of the box, uh, full AI sites, um, usually they don't have the quality. So there might've been a small correlation, but overall some sites with, you know, some sites were penalized. They were using next to no AI content. Some sites were rewarded. They were using next to no AI content. Some sites, you know, there was real, there's no real pattern. So I really don't think that Google is going after AI content. In fact, we have evidence to the contrary where we're running AI tests. So I have all our websites with full AI articles. And funny enough, during the March core update, I actually saw increases in some of them. And yeah, so that, that's why uh, we have some websites that are doing really well with AI content and others that are not. So here's why I believe that some people might be unfairly penalized by the March core update. So um, I believe that you can have poor metrics even with quality content. So hear me out. If you're only targeting short answers, short keywords with a really quick answer, and you're getting only Google traffic, well, in the best case scenario, people are going to come from Google, they're going to find your keyword, they're going to find the answer, and then they're going to leave the site right away. And if you, that cycle repeats over and over and over again, 
then you, maybe you have decent content. It's not amazing, but it's it's decent, right? It's good quality content, but your site still seems like crappy in comparison to other sites that have huge user engagement. So let me show you what I mean with a few examples here. If you're looking, if you're ranking for long tail keywords, like how to cook a turkey in a pr uh, pressure cooker, what's the ideal temperature to cook a chicken, how to mix big beans and rice, people might find you on Google. They might say, okay, how, how to cook a turkey in a pressure cooker. They look up the article and then they say for 20 seconds. What's the ideal temperature to cook a chicken? They might find this and just say, okay, well, what's the ideal temperature? Oh, it's 375 or 420 or whatever. And then they find the answer, they leave right away. How to mix beans and rice. Maybe they're just looking for a quick tip. They might just bounce right away. So depending on what you're writing about, um, in the best case scenario, and if you're only getting Google traffic, people might just come in and out. And at the end of the day, that ends up making your site not, not looking as good as sites like Reddit, Forbes, and other websites that have long and sticky websites with lots of user engagement. So one of the ways that might uh, help that with that would be targeting longer topics. So I like to th talk about like complex topics, advanced topics, unique topics, talk topics that haven't really been covered before or more in depth. So when people come looking for that or people just find you through that, usually they stay on longer. So let me give you an example. If you have a full, like an advanced or a complex thing, full moisture and pH guide for gardening and spraying within North America. Well, the person looking for that is probably highly special. He's looking for something very specialized. They're going to dive in. They're not going to stay five seconds on the, on the site, on the article. They're going to go and they're going to read and consume things. Um, same thing here, like top 25 celebrity living rooms, right? If you have 25 different living rooms and people are staying for an average of five to 10 seconds per like image, just seeing who's doing what and so forth, people are going to stay on your website for quite a long time. So even though you might have the same quality of content, right? So maybe on the prefix exa example, you're really answering how, what the ideal temperature to cook a chicken, you're doing a good job, but you could be doing an equal job, but just covering a more uh, complex topic or a more advanced topic or a more niche to topic, something what I call the longer, longer topics. And you're going to get longer sessions. You're going to get more user engagement on your website just by what you're targeting and the source of the targeting. So I believe that this might be why you're being penalized even with good content. So if you're only going for what I call short keywords, you might be fine your stuff and you might not be, it might not be possible for you to improve it to a point where you start beating the engagement that sites like Reddit have. Um, I believe that Google doesn't only use session time. So in all these examples, I've been talking about session time because it's very easy to understand. However, I believe that if Google treats things like they treat um, Google core web vitals, they're probably using some sort of combination of metrics. And also they're probably using some sort of uh, rank percentile. So they're comparing you to other websites and then measuring in which percentile you land in terms of engagement for those same keywords. So if you're competing for a keyword that all these other major websites are competing for, so that is a very common keyword and Reddit's competing against it, Diverge, Forbes, YouTube, LinkedIn, all these websites. And then you, you have your website. These websites are all going to be um, more engaging than yours. And they're going to be in the top percentile. And you're likely going to be in the bottom percentile, which would in turn start to kind of hinder your site. So, um, it basically the solution or the way to guarantee that you're in the top percentile would be to create new keywords. So that is potentially one of the ways that could help you maybe not guarantee, but help you um, start to push your site into a better direction. So getting a better metric score, because if you're creating a brand new keyword, then by default, if no one else is covering it, you are the best result. So that makes, hopefully that makes sense. If no one else is covering the topic, and you're just creating new keywords, new information for people to consume, then Google it can't really compare you to anyone else. And therefore you're at the top, you're gonna to be at the top percentile over and over and over again. Google is gonna say, wow, you're the most engaging result for this topic and this query because you're the best. Now, I realize people might eventually copy you, but by then hopefully you're already at the top. And, and yeah, so this is gonna be one of the um, ways and approaches that I believe you can move from short keywords that everyone's covering to longer, more complex uh, keywords and topics, and even new keywords that other people have never covered before. And I believe that this writing in a more organic way 
can really contribute to getting your site out of kind of the gutter and striving again. So um, let me kind of uh, illustrate this also in an information gain way, because there's information gain. And essentially what you want to do is you want to contribute to the web's um, knowledge base, or basically you want to provide new information to the web. So Google could categorize and stores information, facts, figures. And if you have a good site and you're always already writing, you're always writing about new keywords, you're essentially adding to the information on game. So um, not only can it help you rank in the higher percentile, um, potentially helping your overall Metro uh, website score, but also just provides you with, you know, new content to rank and it potentially provide uh, an advantage when you compare it to a bad, another website that's only writing about common keywords. Now, please note, all of this is still uh, theoretical where we haven't proven the information gain and we have not proven uh, this either. However, it does seem to fit the pattern. All right, let, let's kind of move on. And I actually, I believe this is why Google is saying that you shouldn't just target keywords. So this would explain if I go back where was writing about the common keywords, whoops, all right. If I go back to writing about the common keywords, why if you're only writing about common keywords, you're probably always gonna be in the bottom metrics just because you're gonna be competing against all these other websites. But if you start ranking and covering new keywords, you're contributing to information gain and you're also gonna be in the higher percentile. So um, this would actually uh, align with what Google has been saying. Now, here's a potential recovery. This is what I would personally do if I want to recover a website. This is putting everything together. See, most penalized websites these days, they are following what I call the old affiliate AdSense model. So you get Google traffic, you point it into an article and you have an affiliate link or AdSense. And as I've explained, in the best case scenario, Google traffic tends to not stay on websites for very long. Google traffic, especially if you're covering short keywords, will come in and then it will bounce. Or they'll come in and then they'll go to your affiliate link, which is what you want them to do, but that in turn creates low user engagement on your website. So this is my new ranking model. So this is gonna be, in my opinion, an important slide where what you wanna do, um, what, I, what I would wanna do or what I would do is I would have, continue to get Google traffic. However, I would also use social and other sources to funnel people into what I call a resource section of my website, a website that really traps people and just gets people consuming things over and over and over again. And then this overall section would increase the user engagement of my entire website. Then my articles rank then I could send them to affiliate and AdSense and that's okay because I have this section over here called the resource section powering up my website. So this is kind of like my new ranking model that I'm following. So I'm using Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and so forth to funnel people to a resource, improve my overall website engagement, and then everything ranks. So let me show you how this could potentially uh, translate into the metric score. So why would this work? We well, get social traffic, which social traffic, if they're going, going to your website, usually they're going to browse, right? It's, it's probably rare that someone comes from social, only visits one page and then leaves. Usually if they're coming from social, they have a reason to come, especially if you're going and you're pointing them to resources. So you from social, they go into a resource section, which, you know, in the engagement area, Google will collect data through Android and Chrome usage data. They'll know, oh, okay, people are really engaged in this website. The information goes back to Google, which then ranks the articles and which then makes you, you know, gives you Google traffic and you can make money from your money making links. So this is kind of like the whole thing broken down as simplified as possible. So um, here's an example of a website that is doing just that with incredible, incredible growth. Let's look at what they're doing. They have a uh, an Instagram page with 153,000 followers. Then they point them to the link tree link, right? They, they have right here. So this link tree link is actually really well done. And what that does is it points them to a resource guide. So here is a whole bunch of resources and they could click on the link. Let's say they click on lemon bars right here or carrot cake or whatever. That brings them to the website. Now the website, this is the resource section of the website where they get all these recipes. So you could just scroll through and say, okay, oh, I wanna know how to make pistachio cake. Oh, I wanna know how to make almond cake or oh, this easy chocolate lava cake recipe. It's a resource section that just keeps people engaged, keeps people clicking and just provides in tons of, of value. So this could help the overall website engagement and then the entire website just thrives. So um, this is their model. This is exactly what they're doing. So they're using Google traffic 
and they're sending them to a whole bunch of articles and they have affiliate links and courses and they make money here. However, they're also getting uh, Google traffic going directly to their resource, which engages users. They're sending Pinterest traffic, which engages users, YouTube traffic, they're sending Facebook traffic and Instagram is going through Linktree, which then re engages into their resource section. So they're funding all this traffic into the resource section, which Google says, hey, you you must be absolutely great. And then Google rewards the website and it ranks for absolutely everything. So, um, so now this is gonna be the resource section. So usually the way I think of resources is resources can be anything that really helps the user achieve their goal. So in, whenever there's a customer, you know, whatever industry you're in, their customer or your prospect is likely having a journey and they also have problems along the way. So problem number one, problem number two, four, th three, four, and so forth. At, this, at the intersection of every single problem, there is an opportunity for a resource. So here's a weight loss example. Um, let's say someone wants to lose weight. Well, the first thing, they might not know what exercises to do. So you could have an exercise video section. So just like we saw where they had a whole bunch of cake recipes, you could just have a whole bunch of um, custom videos that you made, a training program, and you could click number one, two, three, four. That would keep people, people engaged. Next thing, maybe they don't know how to what to eat. You get weight loss recipes. You could have a whole page full of PDFs that they could download with recipes uh, on weight loss. Then you could also have motivation. So maybe people are not motivated. That could be a section of your website that's an accountability forum and so forth. Or they might have diet issues. You could even have a calculator, right? So all of these things can apply to different websites. You have a calculators, a forums, PDFs, videos, whatever it is. Like you have a tool where as long as it's useful and keeps people coming back, this is going to provide value. And now once you have this resource, usually I would wait and I'd see, okay, is the resource alone enough to outweigh the poor metrics of the website? So um, usually Google works with ratios, right? So if you have a really, really good resource and it is providing a lot of value, then that is going to provide better user engagement. However, if you have hundreds of thousands of very short keywords, those hundreds of thousands of short keywords might be outweighing the resource, right? So uh, depending on how much you have on each side, I might change my targeting to target the longer, more complex terms rather than just have short keywords. So I would be going through my website, looking to see, hey, am I targeting a whole bunch of short keywords? And if I am, can I improve that or change the targeting? Or if I can't at all, it's like a really short page and I know that I have no chance of ever getting a long, long session with that term, then I might temporarily remove it until I recover, right? So um, that's up to you. I'm not saying you should remove any pages whatsoever. I'm I, All of this is really up to you. Um, I have no control over Google and you could do all of this at your own risk. However, I'm just showing you what I would personally do. So this is essentially what it looks like when you start improving engagement. Here, you know, you look, you see, okay, well, we have this average engagement here and then you can see over time, you start to increase. So this is also something I would recommend you do. Um, Google Analytics even has an engagement ta tab so you can keep progress and there's other tools like Plausible that I use for engagement tracking. So uh, ranking po is possible even after March core update. Um, sites with great metric scores are um, uh, performing incredibly well, even better than before. I really do think this is kind of like a magic trick or a secret that you, people could unlock and people are in getting incredible traffic with even like not that many links uh, just because they have incredible engagement score on the website. So. Um, if you want to know more, please read the full article. If you want to support me or you want to help yourself rank even better, um, I, <laughs> when I'm not doing any research like this, we're developing the onpage.ai uh, optimization tool. It gives you a whole bunch of uh, information on what is happening in the search results and how to improve and optimize your content. We even have the stealth writer and so forth, um, which is what I was testing with a lot of the AI stuff that was doing well. So um, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, you don't need to go, but if you want, check it out. And if you want to read the whole report, check it out. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. So as always, my name is Eric Landris, and I'll talk to you soon.